This is... Wow! What, what a week. What a week. You can't make this shit up. Shit up. And we are back. We managed to recover from the boldness of Celeste and Dooley, learned from the laid-back cool of Young Savage, and were schooled in the tongue-twistingness of Jay Something. And all of that helped when we had to deal with the dispiriting news of the passing of songbird Gloria Bosman and rapper-dancer Costa Titch. We at WAW wish both of their families, friends and fans strength in dealing with these tragic losses. We'd also like to give thanks for how they made our cultural tapestry that much richer. This week, we've got a bunch of people who, shall we say, deal with warm vibes. From some guys who analyze the hot air of politicians, to a woman who raises the temperature of venues she performs in, and then to another lady who helps us blow off a lot of steam. Welcome back to Wow, What a Week. Our guest, to kick it off, is one of our favorite survivors. She's a bit size, or maybe pint size. She survived growing up in Pretoria and didn't become a Karen or asked to see the manager, please. She's pulled through a range of things and still managed to be damn funny after all of it. Please join us in welcoming someone who's achieved a hectic list of wins, including a recent one, or recently, fitting into her jeans. Her name is New People in Zulu. Uh, Make some noise for Nina Hasty. Hey, how's it? That's a great introduction. I really appreciate it. Thank you. What are you doing, Nina? I'm so good at you. You survivor, you. I'm a great survivor. I, I just want to make one uh, survival thing. Can, your voice is so much louder than mine. Can you put at me a bit softer? Because that's something. Yes, there we go. Sure, it's like it's like waking it's like waking up on a subwoofer. <laughs> Listening to your voice is amazing. Yeah. Do you have like a? You should have like a, an alarm that's just your voice, like that people can. Oh. So so so, what would I say to wake you up, Nina? <laughs> Get out of bed and go make money. <laughs> I, I know you want to say nicer things to me, but... Uh, I, I, I was actually thinking of very nasty things, but I'm not going to go there. Right. White girl from Pretoria yes. becomes a comedian. Yes. Oh, what went wrong? <laughs> like, did the body corporate kick you out? What happened? My dad left when I was two. <laughs> um, he did, but that's irrelevant. The point is, um, I... I don't know how I became a comedian. I wanted to be a rapper. Actually, I wanted to be a DJ. Mm -hmm. How long have you... Do you do you remember me from when I was a teenager? I'm trying to think back. It was uh, Lynn and them, like... I, I, I got my first job in Johannesburg when I was 19. Yes. And I worked at Sony Music, yes. which 19 was 21 years ago, by the way. I know, I don't look... You're turning 40 soon. I'm so turning 40 this year. Yes, my maths is that fast. Well done. Uh, so you got a great 12? Um, I did, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> they let me finish. Oh, that's good. Nice, nice. They pushed you through. They pushed me through too. They were like, just get this woman out of here. One pass all. Exactly, exactly. Um, I managed to get out of Pretoria. I always say born and fled. But when last were you in Pretoria? Pretoria is beautiful. There's been so many gorgeous developments. I'm in Pretoria pretty much almost every weekend. Because really? I geek there a lot. Mm. A massive fan base in Pretoria. So Pretoria is almost... Uh, my second home. Oh man, it's it's so great. There's food markets, there's uh, music setups, there's art. I'm, I just kind of feel like Pretoria is where Joburg was 20 years ago. I almost feel like I need to like relocate back to Pretoria because whatever it's doing, it's it's kind of. I mean, I feel like Pretoria's journey and my journey are the same. It's like it's glow up is real. Absolutely. <laughs> now you chose a career that requires you to stand in front of a lot of people. Yes. But you've also spoken about your issues with anxiety. Yes. How do the two even marry? I actually, I'm an introvert, yes. so I'm an extroverted introvert. So how that is uh, articulated, and a lot of people don't understand this, is that how I recharge is by being alone. And then, uh, so then I go into my little hole. So you need to go back to home base. I need to go back home. I Collect. Don't speak to anybody, don't talk to me, whatever, recharge until I'm on no longer on low power mode and then I come out and I give you everything from my heart and my soul and uh, I will be I will give love energy advice whatever even unsolicited advice which I hate but I always give to other people um, and then I go back into my little hole and and there's nothing there's nothing I've taken all the drugs in the world mm. okay and I believe you had John Christmas on here I gave him a bit of a run for his money not at the same time but I'm just trying Jeez, to are you guys competing uh, no no I think it was just uh, you know in our, on our own islands I've taken all the drugs in the world I've, I've done all the things and I can tell you there is no sensation like an audience 
clapping and standing for you after you've told jokes from your brain. And you're sober is what you're saying. Yeah, I'm very sober. So, so with anxiety and let's say the combo of drugs, how loud is the voice in your head that says, what if they don't laugh? What if they don't laugh? What if they don't laugh? I mean... Or do the drugs help numb that? Or did they back then? No, the thing is, um, we've got drugs in our brain anyway, yes. right? So we're chasing dopamine. Mm -hmm. We're chasing dopamine all day. People that are specifically ADHD, which is what I am, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, have more of a fixation on dopamine because it quells the mm -hmm. uh, the inability to focus. So like Pac-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nee, nee, yeah. Nee, nee, There's a really great book you should read called The Molecule of More. It's very, it's amazing. So, um, and it and it explains the way the different brains work and some that are Pac-Man and others that are like, I just want to go around the block. I just want to be, you know, what are the, who was the, the Mario Brothers? They just want to fetch the princess and go home, you know, fight some turtles on the way and they chilled. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, definitely a, a Pac-Man. And make some coins along the way. Yeah, exactly. So the what, am I answering your question? I think you are. Okay. I, I think you are. Okay. But the voice is never overwhelming, though. The voice is always there. It's not just on stage. It's in life. Yeah. yeah up the, do you like me? Even now, I don't have makeup on. And I'm like, do you, do, I don't have makeup on. Are they still going to like me? It's like my skin and my hair. And I'm wearing a shirt that's oversized, but I really want everyone to know that I've lost like 10 kilos. So I'm like, should I just, you know, be out here like, where are the bathrooms? Fresh? Like, where do I go? Like, where do I go? I need to pick up these heavy glasses. You know, like, uh, so there's, whatever you're doing, you're constantly seeking validation. The validation releases the dopamine. Dopamine makes you feel better, lets you focus your brain, and then you go back home and watch series and whatever and binge out. The feeling of finally fitting back into your genes. Yes, thanks. Was, did you, was that you? Was that you? Or how did you know that I, my, I didn't fit into my genes? Who knew that I didn't fit into my genes? How we're how hard are you guys watching my story? We're not blind. Yeah, no, fair enough. Shame I was fat, guys. <laughs> not, not fat. You're well-rounded. Yeah, no, no, I wasn't well-rounded. I looked like a square. I just like it looked like a walking brick. People would use me to break relationships. They're like, they're, they're not going to shy you, Stina. They're just going to take Nina Hazy and throw them at your relationship and hope that like the bricks fall where they may. Let's talk about you can't make this ish up. Yeah. And I'm saying ish because I try very hard not to swear. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we're going to actually start a swear jar on the show. Every time you swear, you owe us 100 bucks. Golly gosh. That's very strict. I, you, do you do realize that I was on national live television for three years and I don't have a BCCSA complaint? Okay, so you're disciplined. I am disciplined. Okay. Great. I am disciplined. I am disciplined. What's the first story that had you thinking, you can't make this ish up? Okay, first of all, there's a few things here. <laughs> How is your name Spongile Mani and you're always attached to money dramas? Hold on, is that the kid that uh, stole Nesfa's money? Okay, sorry, spent money that was mm. put in her account by mistake. Has that ever happened to you? Uh, I, I've never had that good fortune. I, it's happened to me. I would have blown it, though. Yeah, I blew it. I blew it. I remember the day I, I, I was so broke. I was living in Melville, and uh, I, I think I spent all my money at that bar do, um, that is a number but after five and before seven. Yes. Um, and, and then one day, this, like, it was like 17,000 rand. Imagine back then, like... You know how much you're 17, rand? You were white folk rich. I blew that money. Yes, exactly. I blew that money so fast. And the next, and then I didn't answer my phone for a few days. And the next day, somebody found out where I lived. They had, they had paid the wrong person on their, on their books. It was, uh, uh, it was actually Di Brente. So it was Cajiso de Dijas company. Uh -huh. But the lady that made the payment, she had to come and ask me for the money. And I was I just like, I saw her at the door and I just mised her. I was like, nah, I'm not giving this back. And then I, I eventually... I eventually made good with it. Okay, so you paid the money back. Yes, and then they did it again about six years after that. Because Kakiso doesn't learn. Yeah, I was like, guys, why are you doing this? And then I returned that immediately. I was like, guys, you've got to stop doing this. But uh, yeah, so that's actually happened to me. So I can understand if 14 bar lands in your accounts. What did she spend it on? She went shopping. They were buying expensive champagne. Uh. I think she bought like bags and shoes and stuff. I would have so, spent so, so, it so differently. That's the thing. Like, I would have spent it so differently. What would you have done? I would have um, 
bought my grand that bed. You know the bed that that like there's a remote on it and it like costs like a hundred thousand rand. The one that might malfunction and turn into a pretzel. Okay, maybe not that one okay. then. All right, I, I would I would um I'd go over. I would just travel. I would just disappear off the so face of the earth. You do white folk stuff. Like travel by an island. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, am I a white person like that? I'm <laughs> such a textbook case. Yes, I totally would. So why is Miss Money back in the news though? Oh, so there's people that actually trust this person. Miss Moneybags um, is elected as the treasurer of uh, Walter Sisulu University. The treasurer. If there's one thing this person cannot do is treasure money. <laughs> she will hide the treasure. So and not even leave a map. There's no map. This is just a pirate. This is a pirate being trusted as a treasure. That makes no sense. This is Jack Sparrow. So is this like uh, cops um, after pulling a bust of a coke heist and trusting you with it? Um, You know, the coke wasn't my drug. Oh, okay. So Alcohol. Oh. And rappers. Oh. But, but rappers of sweets. Are this, I love sweets. How many rappers did you do in your time? You know what? I always make it out to be or bigger. This, or is this a case of it's, it's the of less you tell us, the better? <laughs> I'm actually trying to think about if I ever did less or not or more. I don't know. There were, I, don't, I don't even remember. Oh gosh, um, I'm, I'm maybe I must check that. I don't know if that's on my books or not. Maybe that was uh, off the ledger. At which rapper did you realize I'm running out of rappers now? I had reached surplus in 2011. <laughs> I, I, I. I, I <laughs> yeah, anything after that. I reached my quota by 2011. Anything after that was surplus. I was just like, and now I was just being greedy. I was I was a treasurer. <laughs> I spent the 14 million. Jeez. No, I, I think I, I think what happens is with stories like that, you know, you love to exaggerate, but there was actually just one that I was very much in love with for a long time. It was actually him that had five other girlfriends that I didn't know about. And then after like that, I was like, oh, it's like that. Hang on a second. All your friends that are in my DMs. <laughs> And did you? No, but I did uh, make him look a little bit foolish. Uh, and how would you do that? I phoned all the other women. Oh, did you guys have like a... Yeah. We all met him for breakfast. Yeah. You're lying. Yeah, I phoned them. I was like, hey, listen, I found out about, about you. And she's like, yeah, actually, I found out about this other one. Yeah, hey, I also found out about this other one. And now all the girls, we're all friends. And when you met him, what happened? Ah, I saw him the other day, actually. I was just mized. I was like, oh, you look so... Gross. What's his name? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> he just looks old. He looks like he's aged badly. He's made bad decisions. Okay, let's all Google the rappers no. that now look old. <laughs> all of them do. Yeah, that's why I'm making it nice and vague. All rappers age badly because they drink for breakfast and they smoke cigarettes or whatever it is. They, they eat the souls of young women for breakfast. Oh, wow. Mm. Pope Francis is in the news. Mm. Uh, he's suggesting reviewing the Catholic Church's vow of celibacy for priests. You can't make this up. Yeah, so what, oh, like, okay. What is the point? So this is my thing, and this is, there's another comedian, um, Dane Baptiste in the UK, you guys yes. should check out his stuff. He does a whole special where he like sort of breaks down Catholicism and stuff. And I, there was a re really great takeout from one of his specials where he says, you know, in Christianity, there's the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Like, where is the mother in the situation, right? Um, so, like, it's easier to believe that God is a ghost, like Casper the Friendly Ghost, than to, than, trust, a woman. Than to trust a woman in the spiritual space, right? So, okay, if we if we go by that thinking, and then if you think, okay, cool, that everything is masculine in the space, maybe according to that sort of uh, thinking, mm -hmm. sure, then a priest would not have to... Uh, have sex with another human being but then what are the body parts for what is the connection for like why also like if you if you don't understand the concept of uh connection and sacrifice and commitment and uh, to another human being aren't you missing out an entire element of the human experience I mean, I know because I opted out of that for ages ago. Like I had like, you know, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm, you know, childless, carefree, and I've never slept better. But I'm not a priest. But are you celibate? Um, I, yes, for about eight months, I was kind of on a celibacy mission. I, I've started, you know, it's just my skin keeps getting better. Nobody's keeping me up at night, you know. Even last year, like it wasn't really a big sex year. I maybe like took, I maybe took, I maybe had sex like twice last year. Yeah. So it's been, I guess, maybe, either that or I'm going through a drought. 
oh, my my standards are getting high. I think that's what's happening. Sister Nina, yeah. and gentlemen. Yes, thank you. So, bless you. Bless you, my child. So should priests be allowed yes. not to be they should No, pri priests should be encouraged to be in relationships because they keep giving people marriage advice. What do you know about marriage? Hmm? You sitting there with your books no, but, but, and no but, Facebook. But, but the good book says. Just one book. Just one book. Isn't this guy bored? You know what I mean? Like, surely. I mean, where's your library? And and some would argue that this vow of celibacy has never stopped those that want to shag anyway. Yes, because actually any sort of oppressive thinking and society, when the, when something is an unnatural oppression, the reaction, every, every what's Newton's theory? Every action has a equal and opposite reaction. Oh, I whatever. thought Newton said every guy wants to nut at some stage. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what he said. He's like, where are the nuts? These nuts. That's what, uh, that, I think that was the quote, actually. Yes. Um, but if you're, if you're a priest and you haven't got access and now you're being uh, oppressed by this idea, you, okay, do you know that story about the, the kids with the marshmallow? Tell so us. there's a little there's a there's a test. So they put the they actually they trained it online. Don't eat the marshmallow. Don't eat the marshmallow. Don't eat the marshmallow. Don't eat the marshmallow. What are you hearing? Marshmallow, 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 marshmallow. So like um but the kids that didn't eat the marshmallow, this is what they didn't do on the trend that went online. Yes. They kept toys and stuff in the room, right? So the kids that distracted themselves left the table, didn't stare at the marshmallow, I went and played with the toys and did what uh, uh, other things were able to keep it together that when the parents came back they could have two marshmallows so all i'm saying is any sort of oppressed society has a depraved reaction mm -hmm. have you watched japanese porn you know what i'm saying no don't <laughs> tell me about japanese porn <laughs> oh, all i'm saying is if you can find those clips that aren't censored you'll see that some weird shit out there but i'm just i'm okay. just saying what was 100 you bucks you just wore oh two <laughs> no you, it's too late damn I'll, I'll pay the hundred bucks. Ah, uh, but you owe me. Yeah, thanks. Okay, fine. Thank you, guys. I didn't bring any cash. No, no, I got you. Thank you. Bucks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Um, so what do they do in Japanese porn? What what happens there? I don't know, but there's uh, there's scenarios and there's people playing the game shows. It's very weird. All I'm saying is there's a reaction to oppression. Even in our society, there's a reaction to oppression. Like, you know, my parents were very strict. What happened to me? You know, like th there's a reaction to oppression. So if you are can if you can open up the floodgates for priests and stuff to have a different experience, maybe they can still choose it. Do you want to open up the floodgates, or do you want to just say, you know, we won't say anything if you do? As long as it's not the altar boys. No, exactly. I mean, the, the thing is, why? Because there's so much secrecy and nonsense around it, it, that natural urge is going to come out in a, a destructive way. It's it's gross, man. Speaking of, you can't make this ish up. Mm. Do you know that I was this week old mm -hmm. when I found out that Bobby Caldwell is actually a white dude? You know what you want to do. Fall out. I tried everything. And won't give up. Every, some people I actually had think that no idea really? Bobby Caldwell was white. Yes, I've actually found a list. When I saw that, I was like, I wonder who else is white. So I found some people. Are you, are you, are you on the list? I'm on the list. <laughs> you know, that's so funny because that's so rude. Uh, I so you know what? I have to just put this out there because I get dragged a lot for people like, oh, there's our Rachel Dollars. I have never, in my public opinion that I can remember, um, claimed to be claimed to, to, to be black out of my own volition. Just claimed right. No, I I, I think there was a there was a you know people suggesting that because we just didn't have the vocabulary to say, gosh. Nina, I'm so glad that you are releasing yourself from your own um, uh, societal upbringing and that you're actually making an effort to, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hang on a second. Uh, assimilate into a country where you're the minority and everyone else is the majority and you're taking the time and effort to take away the idea of how it is that you were and actually just learn about other people and stop acting like a visitor in your own country. Maybe that's the sentence that everybody should have said. Well, I'm, I, I feel like t I'm tall as Mona, just pushing my own agenda. Anyway, so um, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is... You allowed yourself to be colonized and that's also fine. I, 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 d I allowed myself to be free, right? Uh, but I'm going to say something else. I, I once didn't uh, correct someone. So Iman Rapeti was on Training SA one night 
and she was talking about straightening her hair and like how the the humidity changes and stuff like that and she's like you know us colored girls you know how it is when your hair minces right nina and we had to go to break and i was like ah. and then puppy was like and that's right we off to the break and i was like um i just i didn't have a chance to refute it then i was just like yes that's right puppy like yeah and how does that affect your relationship with black twitter or how does black twitter respond to stuff like that because yeah. surely you have a relationship with black twitter as a black girl um i uh, i think w- i think what what happens with twitter is uh twitter is predominantly run by young people mm. um and people that are in their like early 20s uh have not learned the concept of grace yet because they haven't lost anything uh-huh. So the self-righteousness and the self-identity that hasn't quite formed yet is the general conversation that's being run on Twitter. So if somebody's just picking up stompies from someone else's conversation and they're going to run a narrative about that, I can't really take that seriously. I'm just going to wait until you're 45 and you lose everything, you little shithead. Sorry, swear jar. Um, okay, yeah, it's 100 bucks. <laughs> a skis, guys, it's fine. I'll just take it off my invoice. Uh, short ass mo is here. <laughs> That's very funny. Shame. No, I mean, I sound like I'm answering things in a, uh, in a roundabout way. It's just there's stuff that I wanted to say. Absolutely. What else would you like to get off your chest before we let you go? Um, Fresh, I would like to get stuff off my chest. South African men need to do better. You guys need... How? You guys need to be better at sex, hey? What do you mean? You guys are such flops. Hold on, hold on. What, what's your sample size that you could... No, it's, the size is not the issue. It's about the... Tell us about the sample. The, it's about the sample. You know, you, you can still be within your calories, but just take a little bit from the buffet. You can be... You remember the Spur Salad Valley, and then you just have like one piece of lettuce from this, and then one potato here, two, two beans from I'm, that I'm, thing. I'm, I'm still so confused. Like, uh, how many people have you been... I don't doing come here. Yeah, don't come and police. I'm telling you now, no, statistics. I'm, I, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you that I've sampled from, from all the salad dishes. Right? And I can tell you that those salad dishes... The problem with South African men, right? First of all, you guys aren't oil paintings. Let's just be honest. Like, I mean, you know, some of you guys, you know, mildly good looking, but the bar is so low. Like, the bar is on the floor. We all have to look good. We have to have our hair done. We have to have our bodies banging. We have to do this and we have to do that. You guys just pitch up with your with your mkabas and your gout elbows and your diabetes and your three baby mama dramas and your nonsense. And then, like, what is that? With your uh, toxic, like, only come at one hour a week to see me nonsense not no integrity guys guys and then on top of all of that you want to be bad at sex I... no so what is this is this all you're getting so you want more than just yeah no it's just that south african men and it's not just me i've spoken to other women south african men only think that sex is only putting the p in the v oh okay so there is no there's no other things do you know that there's more to you guys don't even know like if i were to take a diagram and then you know you would like ask what is this and where where is this and what does this do you guys would all fail that's because there's a 33 percent pass rate that's why it's because you guys didn't take biology you didn't study at school not even like biology and matric like biology in grade five but they, but but they don't, they don't teach us about how to knock without biology all i'm saying is if you, if you guys can go to all the effort of finding files on someone online, you can find out everything about your soccer team. You can find out everything about, you know, how a, an exhaust works and the downpipe and the crankshaft and the pistons or whatever it is. If you guys can find all that stuff out, find out how my crankshaft and my pistons and my spark plugs and my window wipers and my uh, front fender that comes from the limited edition GTI of 1976 rabbit model with the... Uh, if you could find all that out about a car, why can't you find that out about a woman? All I'm saying is make a little bit more effort. You guys are too ugly to be making these kinds of mistakes. Yeah. I almost regret asking you what else you'd like to get off your chest. Um, that's the end. I'm, I'm not done. If you guys want me to go on a monologue and, and do... <laughs> I'm... Are you working on a show? Are you testing your material right now? <laughs> I am actually. I'm working on a show. It's called Hasty Decision. And it's about the difference. It's, it's, so the, 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 the premise is I wish my brain and my vagina had the same taste in men. And it's exactly that. That's the premise of the whole show. So where is your brain taking you that your vagina is like, what are you doing? Yeah, my brain is taking me to South Korea. 
Yeah, South Korea. What do you mean? Where, when, where men dress well and wear makeup. I'm into it, hey? Are you one of those South Africans that are obsessed with South Korean series? Yes, K-pop. Yes, K-pop. And, and all things South Korea. And yeah, say to to someone who's uninitiated, why should I even care about what happens in South Korea? Um. Okay. Well, do you want me to give you an economics perspective? Uh, uh, what about I can give you a lecture. Okay. Cool. Well, let's just talk about. In, in, okay. okay. South South Korea, the South Korea minute with Nina. Hastie. The South Korea minute with Nina Hasty and yeah. how that can affect the South African economy. Okay. Right. I think that one of the most untapped resources in South Africa is performing arts sure right um i don't think that we have a machine that can support artists how are they doing it in south korea let's just take one example from their entire machine outside of k-drama as a, as the a film and television industry which is massive mm. land of squid game uh yeah it's squ- Massive. Okay, we'll just we'll park that um, outside of the full K-pop industry. I'm just going to take one example out of K-pop, which is BTS, right? BTS Army, smooth like butter, got a cream with it. Okay. You're, you're, butter. You're using up your minute yeah. singing. Wait, you can cut out that minute. Okay. You can cut out the breaths. Those seven Korean men mm. contribute five billion U.S. dollars to the Korean GDP annually. Shut up. So the ecosystem within which the artists live and how that machine contributes to the GDP, the job creation, the merchandising, the selling, the the uh, messaging system, the licensing of the music, the support, the arts. One more example. Okay, mm-hmm. Karen. No, no, carry on, carry on. One yeah. more example. You have my attention. Um, the uh, palace, one of the, the Guangzhou Palace, I, I might be pronouncing it or saying it wrong, I'm welcome okay. to be corrected, um, is being renovated by Gucci. Okay. Right? So if you can see the progressive nature that the arts and culture department is using to brand, uh, associate with... Um, with a, a luxury designer brand. That's how people should get involved with luxury designer brands. All that LV money that's being spent by our uh, below the bread line consumers, mm-hmm. that money should be pumped back into our arts and culture. Be um, uh, help, you know. So we have a brand new arts and culture mm-hmm. minister. Uh, shout out to Zizi. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what would your advice to him be? Oh, Zizi. Based on your learnings about South Korea. Phone me. <laughs> no, beyond <laughs> that. Beyond that. So there's... Um, Something very interesting. There are three uh, performing, like, uh, pop idol academies. Yes. So even when you're at school, you know, like when you go play soccer or whatever, you go to soccer after school from about 16, and then you get taken by the Men United, what, what, and then, you know, and then you're in the 18 area. Yeah, when you're in the, <laughs> then all of a sudden you're in the 18 area. They do the grassroots training for young people. You, you're still going to school, but at 2 o'clock you go to pop idol training to the oh, academy, wow. right? Oh. So you go to the academy and you learn how to sing, how to dance, how to stand, how to pose, how so to avoid t- scandals. T- if you want to... From childhood, the machine is designed to support you as an artist. When you look at that, they only have a, a population, well, I mean, the pro, uh, the projection of their population in uh, 2070 is uh, 37 million. I don't know what the current uh, uh, population is, but their population is lower than ours. Okay, granted, it's a it's a homogenous, um, so that means this everybody is the same, so yes, all yes, yes. Korean people, uh, if, and they all speak the same language, so yes, that's a different com- kind of societal background. But if you took all the people that were into Ama Piano, if I were to go and set up an, uh, a performing arts academy in the Eastern Cape, in uh, the Western Cape, in KwaZulu Natal, in Limpopo, wherever th- those places are, and um, then attach those things to um, other adjoining uh, systems so people that understand the licensing of music the companies um why is whatsapp not a uh, healthy or why is there not a messenger app that can help people to share music that the artists can get royalties from why are our royalties not protected why are royalties as images if i were to like stop working today all the the shows that I've been on aren't even listed on IMDB. Do you know how I've been working in this industry since I was 13? Yeah. People don't know that. Um, all the shows and things... But whose responsibility is it, though, to get... Well, to get so there they, they are people that are... Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, what's it when you go and ask the government to change the rules about it? Legislation. Yes, the legislative changes that need to be made. There's a lot of people that have asked... I think Jack... Um, I don't know what's his name. 
anyway, there's there's uh the South African Guild of Actors mm. uh that are fighting for the change in legislation sure, sure. so that we can have a rights to our own image. Sure. I don't have the rights to my face. No, you don't. I don't have the rights to my face. I take with it and do with it as I please. Absolutely. So, put on a t-shirt, sell it and get away with it. One thousand percent. Then if you look at how they've managed to sort their system out, when somebody is an actor, they, they're like, wow, that guy's so rich. So I was, I was trying to explain to a friend of mine in South Korea, I said, you know, when, when he's like, oh, because I've been engaging with people on my verified account, like, hey, what's up? And they're like, a celebrity is engaging with me. I'm like, what do you mean? Like being a celebrity in South African society, we aren't respected by our peers. We're looked down as lowly citizens because most artists die poor. Yeah, during COVID, I know Nina, you must apply for 350 like us. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So we need to create a system and that system didn't take them long to build. It started in the late 70s, early 80s yeah. and they built this thing up. If we, we can still within my generation build a system that allows artists to have the support and the you know who, uh, who you know who deserves this mm. more than anyone else mm. the south african public mm. yep. the south african public deserve to be entertained mm. by they deserve to go to shows by that are professional entertainers, by professional entertainers. Mm. you know what i'm saying not the slapdash telenovela everything south africans love comedy why aren't the broadcasters commissioning comedy mm. we need our machine to work. So when you ask me what is my fascination with South Korea, the economic model that supports the arts. Ha. And on that mic drop her note, uh, Nina Hasty is about to hastily leave the building. I'm going to make some hasty decisions. What are you working on right now? Where can we find you? So um, I am busy developing, and I have been for three years. However, a podcast, a podcast. But you're, but you're also doing everything yourself. Yes, I'm. I'm shooting it. I'm editing it. I'm writing the script. I'm. I've even done the graphic design. Fresh. Oh wow. I've. I've. I've done the graph. The animation. So this is a real one man show. It's a one man show. Um, I shot the first two like seasons of yeah. it. Um, I didn't like them. Why is it not up? Um, there's something very specific that I want to articulate. Sure. And. I've done a lot of research. It's so funny because I was actually on the money in the beginning. Um, and I got swayed by people that were trying to, you know, give me favors and whatever. Sure. This show is important. This show is going to be of service to the South African communities of people that need to understand themselves because we don't have mental health support. Mm. We don't have mental health support. Do you know that there are only 650 qualified psychiatrists in South Africa. Of those 650 qualified psychiatrists, 400 of them are in private practice. That leaves the weight of the nation's psyche on 250 qualified and active psychiatrists in our public health system. How? Because, because, and I'll tell you and why. Have been allowed it, to even get to that? It goes back to, so in order to become a psychiatrist, that is different to a psychologist. Psychiatrist is a medical doctor mm. that does seven years of medicine and then specializes in psychiatry. So even on a base education level, when they get to the universities, the spots that are offered for those people are limited. limited yes. So we are going back to the education system that isn't allowing people because they haven't identified psychiatry and mental health as a social ill. And that is actually what is uh, triggering a lot of gender-based violence, it, crime, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. It's fact, putting a, a strain on society. In fact, a lot of our social ills are up here. A lot of people are not okay mm. and are acting out. Correct. And if we could nip it in the bud, mm. maybe we'd have... A, less of the social ills that we have. Mm, absolutely, 1,000%. Because But we're not being led in that direction. Why, yes. why is that? Because uh, nobody knows what they're doing. Because nobody knows. So I, I have something. It's an offering. It's a comic. I'm a comic. It's a comics approach to You're wellness. The I'm the papai. Okay. Um, it's not a funny, funny show, funny haha. It's also not a serious show. It's not like, tell me your feelings. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. It is me running personality tests with people because I feel we need to answer one question. Mm. We don't have a metric we don't have a BMI, a pH level, a middle C, uh, what the base level of understanding what mental health should look like. Mm -hmm. And my, I want to answer one question, and I'm going to use South African celebrities and people to answer this question. How do you know how you are if you don't know who you are? Mm -hmm. 
that's the whole ethos of the project. I want to help people understand who they are because when you know who you are, you can articulate whether you are well or you are not well. And in fact, if you know exactly who you are, like on a scale of one to ten, if you you know exactly the ten, mm. you can know when you're a threat to yourself or mm. to other people. Correct. You can know when it's not advisable for you to mm-hmm. start the car, mm-hmm. to leave the house, mm-hmm. to engage with someone, mm-hmm. because you know yourself that, mm. that well. Jeez. So when are you starting uh, medicine? Um, so we've shot now, this is officially the first season because I've thrown the other two seasons away. Um, we've shot the first two episodes. My guests are Jason Goliath and Shannon Ezra. And it should be live, uh, I want to say the second week of April 2023. Okay. 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 Uh, on YouTube, Otherwise You Well. It's called Otherwise You Well. There's um, on Instagram and Otherwise You Well. And then also follow me because I make stupid videos about cars and people. I'm also still, I can't swear. I'm still funny, guys. Just go onto my Instagram. I make stupid jokes. No, you can swear one more time, but then you'll know ask the other books. Okay. I'm still cuck funny, guys. There, that Nina Hasty on Instagram. Go follow. I do a whole series where I furcha lake people with cars. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that Nina Hasty. This is Wow! What, what a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. <laughs> If you listen very carefully, in the background, in the crowd, you can also hear me going, ah. <laughs> From humble beginnings in KZN to performing with supergroup Joy Celebration, as well as internationally renowned performers such as Brahu, Maseke Lira, Tandi Swamazwai, Jonas Gwangwa, and Madame Sibongile Kumalo. Her music can be classed as Afro Soul but they can also apply to her as a performer in person. She used to sing whenever she got a chance during school breaks. In fact, as she was washing her hands from the bathroom, she was singing. She's known to reduce grown men to tears, well, with her music. <laughs> a lovely welcome to Brenda Mdambo. Well, <laughs> what an introduction. Hello, Brenda. Hi, okay. how are you? You were washing your hands and you were singing. And you hear me sing? She sings all the time. I sing all the time, actually, right? I sing all the time. Is it like a crutch? Like, what? what is it about it? Is it like a reflex thing? What is it? Like, I think... L- like, like, for instance, some people will suck their thumb, yeah. comfort. Yeah. Uh, some people twist their hair. Yeah, I sing for my own comfort and my own sanity, in a way. So, so what do you sing? Like, what, what's your go-to tune or melody? You know, it's so strange. I compose a song. I can sing anything from whatever. I can just, if I'm feeling maybe tired, yes. I can sing, I'm tired, tired, tired. I, I just do that all the time. Please sing to us about your morning so far. My morning? So far, yes. So do a little freestyle for us. Beautiful. So beautiful morning. Peace of mind, clarity, and everything is okay. Peace of mind, clarity. <laughs> Jeez. You know you're going to make me break down, so don't do that. <laughs> don't do that ever again. Uh, that's key. Yo. <laughs> You are turning 40 soon. Yes, this year. This is this year. It yes, is no, year. no, no. Yes. W- what's your fear about hitting 40? I have none. I have no fear. What are you looking forward to about 40? Liberty. Yes. Um, freedom. Um, let me continue. Okay, carry on. 40, I'm not scared of even saying that I'm 40. You know, most women don't like to reveal their age most of the time. Mm. I'm like, I'm happy to be 40 and being this... I'm happy to be 40 and be being myself and it, with everything that has happened that I've been through that I've, I've I've been able to do in my 30s I'm happy to be a 40 year old that is this and what is this just my you know there's some contentment that I feel I feel yes. so content and so happy in my life right now um even though I'm 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 going through certain things that that are you know amongst like in, 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 Okay, let me get on my thought. Even though I have listen, so many... Listen very carefully. <laughs> even though I may be going through a lot of things that I talk about openly, yes. but I'm so happy to be just content. Tell us about the bravery or not that comes with allowing yourself to be vulnerable, especially on social media, mm-hmm. because you wear your heart on your sleeve about it. Yeah. I mean, uh, earlier this week, uh, you, uh, you were posting about your anxiety yeah. and that it's back... Yeah. Um, tell us, take us through that journey that you're on, because you're taking us with you on this journey. Yeah. You know, 
I've been suffering for from anxiety for a very long time. Mm. They said I have chronic anxiety. That basically means you need pills for this. Yes, but I'm trying not to take pills. Mm. I decided that I'm going to stop taking medication because I almost didn't make it for this interview because medication sometimes it it delays me like it it it, it slows me, you down it slows me down yes so i'm trying to rely on myself and trust myself and trust my mind that i'm able to do anything that i want to do without any control i i decided to be open about my my my, my anxiety because i know that i'm not alone mm, mm. and there is no way that it's, I, especially I, in our industry too yeah, it's actually I know, wild i know i'm not i'm not alone and if i if, if i hide it it's going to kill me mm. If I hide and try to 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 show myself up strong all the time, mm. it's going to really kill me. So I need to talk about it. If I talk, sometimes I, I take a call and call up, up a three friend that I just call, and they just listen to me. I just go on and on and on and on, mm. and then I know that I'm I'm releasing. And with so, with social media, I don't talk in details of what I really go through in my in my, in my journey mm. with, with suffering from this mental illness, but. I'm talking about it and a lot of people are engaging and, and they're opening up and I've been able to help a lot of people. That's, also, that's one thing that is strange about it. I'm able to help other people and they say, thank you for helping me. Mm. I don't feel as anxious, you know, but sometimes we can't help ourselves. Mm. Yeah. What advice would you have for someone that has a family member or a partner or a child battling anxiety? Because often you feel helpless. Yeah. Uh, often you don't know how to help. You don't know how to show up for them. How would you advise that person? Honestly, you need to be there. Just be there. Because anxiety is something that sometimes it's very hard to elaborate and explain to someone mm. who doesn't understand what I'm going yeah, through. Yeah, because they tell you, uh, but snap out of it. Exactly. You know? And then you find that your mind at that time is racing. Mm. You cannot snap out of it. Mm. I've had two nights where I didn't sleep. Jeez. Because my mind, I could not control it. Mm. Like it was really, really at the bad when I said, pray for me. It's really bad. It was really, really bad. I was not able to just you know, be still and be stable and be balanced. I was even feeling a bit dizzy mm. and, and I was feeling like I'm choking. I'm feeling like I can't breathe. Mm. I'm feeling like all these things and then they affect your body. Mm. The best thing that you can do for, for someone like me is just to be there. Mm. It's just to be there because sometimes you never understand what the person is going through. But be there means what? I'll tell you why I'm saying this. A lot of men, for instance, uh, often if someone is talking to me about the issues they have, yeah. In their mind, they will need to offload. Mm -hmm. But in my male-centric mind, I'm looking for solutions as opposed to just listening. Yeah. I think it, there's something that I need, I need to explain. There are problems yes. that need solutions. Mm -hmm. And there's this mental thing that needs you to listen. Yes. So when you listen, you listen with the understanding, just to wanting this person to vent it out. Mm -hmm. and, it, and to know that I'm here. Yeah. And mm -hmm. sometimes we, we try to bring solutions when someone just needs a hug. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was like, like just hold, like a hug, just hug. Just, them. just hold me and shut up. Yeah, mm. you know, sometimes that's what a person really needs. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you are gifted. You know, there's talent, but yeah. you are gifted. Where was that moment in your career that you realized that this is actually bigger than me? Like this is, God is working through me. Do you remember where that moment was? You know, I've had a lot of moments, Yeah. you know, and sometimes I try not to dwell on them because then I can, I, I can get lost mm. in moments. Mm. I've performed in a lot of stages mm. with a lot of people mm. and I've met a lot of people, you know, in what I do. And I try not to define myself based on that, yes, yes, but I yes, try yes. to define myself based on the life that I've touched mm. through my gift. Mm. And I like the fact that you said I am gifted because it took me a long time to understand that what I have. The difference. Yes. 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 So my gift, I had to define it. What is it supposed to do? My gift is there to heal. So I do that. And when I get someone who comes to me and say, you know, I had the lady who came to my show um, in December. She said, I came to your show because I wanted to listen to you and that they have planned to kill myself. Jeez. And those things, sometimes they can be they're too much for me. It's, it's heavy. It's heavy. Mm. But I was like, how are you feeling now? Mm -hmm. She said, 
I'm feeling okay. You made, you, I was so, that day I felt like something was moving through me as sure. well. The whole room was like intense. Yes. The whole room was intense. And I feel like I received something and everybody who was in the room received a lot mm -hmm. as well. So the lady was, was so relieved and she said, I feel fine. I, w I wanted to say thank you sure. for sharing your life and just sharing your gift with us. Mm -hmm. And that for me is a moment that makes me keep, you know, doing it. Even though I feel tired, I'm like, oh, is there a point of doing what I'm doing really? Can, you know, I don't feel like I can do it. But because of such people and the impact that the music, you know, has on people, I want to keep like, mm. doing it. You, you, you need to keep ministering, as yes. it were. Yes. Now, you were that person for that lady. Who's that person for you? It's God. Yeah. God. I run to God. When when I'm overwhelmed. What do you say to him? Oh, sorry. What do you say to her? <laughs> to God. Can't be a guy. <laughs> sorry, we're not organized enough. <laughs> so, I go to God. Like, I pray. Like, you know, my prayers are not really of requesting a lot of things. I'm not a, a, a requester. I don't mm. say, give me money. Mm. You know? You know, I, I just pray. Sorry, God. I, I need money. Dog. No, 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 no. And the thing is that my understanding is that if I'm walking... <laughs> If I'm walking in my right direction, yes. trust me, I do get money. Yes, you yes, know, yes. and money will find. It finds me. you. Yes. Yeah, it's like I only say money. No money recognizes me. Money knows me. Money will find me. But with God, it's just to it ground. I feel grounded when I go to God. Mm. I feel grounded. Mm. I've, I'm only thankful and grateful for life. You know, I go to God to say thank you. Mm. If I need something, I thank Him for that thing because I believe that He is gonna give me that thing sure. anyway. I have some, I have, gr I have great faith, I mm. great faith, I have big faith, I have faith. You know, when things are dark, I just remain in faith. When were you the most angry at God? When, <laughs> you know, when um, uh, my relationship failed, mm. I was angry. Because, as, in, as in your marriage? Yes. Okay. Because I have children and I never wanted to raise children in a, the way that I grew up, mm. I I had children later in my life. True, because I waited, mm. and then when that didn't happen, I think it 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 it, it had it 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 had a, a bitter. Why were you angry at God for your marriage not working out? That, mm. that why didn't why is it not working out? Mm. The thing is that. Before you give up on something, you try, 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 sure. try, keep trying, you know? Mm. And I felt like, okay, now I'm trying on my own. I'm trying not with God, n not with anyone even. I'm like just, no one is showing up. No one is showing up. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just trying on my own. So I need it's to a party it for one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know, I'm checking out. Then I checked out because I was like, okay, there's nothing to fight for. But even that point though, when you get to that point of, you know what? Okay, shop. Yeah. It can't be easy. No, it, e even if the writing has been on the wall for however long. For yeah, yeah, it's not easy. Like I, I I've never met anyone who's divorced and said, "Oh my God, it was." A, it was a breeze. It was a breeze. <laughs> you know, it's never. The it, party's next week. It's never easy. Yeah. It's very difficult, and yeah. I think, you know, as time goes on, you think we have children. Like there's a thing about uh, marriage with children. If you don't have children, maybe maybe it's easy. I don't know, but children, like, mm. and also the navigating of life with this person now after. Yes, yes. You know, yes. because we have to channel you're, stu you're still stuck together. <laughs> forever, <laughs> I know, forever. So you have to r really have grace also to have, you know, have grace on that now part of the relationship. And remember when to put the knife away. Yeah, <laughs> you, you don't need the knife. What do, what do you need the knife for? Leave the knife alone. But the thing is you're angry. You're like, no, what? I'm no longer angry, honestly. Like, yeah. I, I think now we get along. We are, we are bad. It's like, sure. you know. You're better. doing what needs to be done now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You've pretty much kept your relationship out of the public eye, um, including the marriage. Even now, a lot of people will probably be saying, oh, she's not married anymore. You know, okay. Let me DM her quickly. <laughs> Stop. Obviously, it was by choice yeah. that you're going to keep everything about your relationship yeah, you know, out of the public. I'm a very private person. Yeah. I don't think there's anyone who can claim to really know me like they know me. Sure. Well, you apart know? from him. 
No, this, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Or maybe not. I don't know. I yeah. even, you know, like well, you never know. Yes. You know, you never know. But I'm a very private person. Mm -hmm. Like I, I didn't, even, I, I didn't even think about it. I don't usually talk about my life. Sure. If, if, if even if I, I am talking about my life, you can get the picture, but you don't know the story. Mm -hmm. You will never know the story. You know, sure. I, I, I never let people in like that. Mm. You know, I'm protective of myself and my children and my mm. family. You've got, you're working on brand new music, a brand new album. Yes. How much of what you've been through so far, including the marriage not working out, will be put into this album? The album is that. <laughs> the album is a offload. Oh, geez. It's an okay. offload, you know. It's... It's a space where I went to mm -hmm. for some sanity, yes. for some peace of mind, yes. for some, I don't know, like, so my music, you feel that I'm talking about certain things. Like she went through this. Yes. Mm -hmm. I went through it. You feel the emotions, you feel everything. You, you know, it, it, I don't know how to explain it, but the music is just my, my space where I go to when I, I need some peace of mind. When is the new album coming out? Because now we're all curious. First of all, on the 24th of March, this you need to pre-order okay. the album. Okay. It's going to be out for pre-order, to pre-order, just to say. The album is coming out in, I don't want to give the date as now. Okay, but pre-order is 24th of March. Pre-order is now is done, 24th of March. But you also have a show that weekend. Yes. Take us through that. What is the, what is the, what is the show? So the show is about me. It, 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 I call it intimate sessions. So yes. I want to break the music down, break it down. So have so it's us and you in a lounge almost. Yes. Yes, you get it. No, I get, get it. I get you. Get Dude, it. I've been a fan for the biggest time. You just you don't know it. <laughs> Thank you. So the music is that I'm going to be talking about the album, Why I Wrote Ndonele, mm. Why I Wrote Baliaklima, Why I Wrote Aowetua, Why I Wrote um, Don't Be Afraid, mm. Why I Wrote Enza Those are all songs on the album. Okay. You know? the, so I'm, when I break them down, I get to perform them with just, um, I have uh, Ubab Dali on the, on the percussion. Sure. I have um, a great guitarist from Zim. I have another guy that, like the music is going to be so beautiful. And so all you need to do is to come and relax, sit down and enjoy. Now from the forthcoming album, already as Abenze gets out. Yes. What were you going through when you were writing that? And so I did it in 2020 20, when um, COVID was mm. hitting us. We all have a COVID song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I like, okay, fine. Dude, you need to start thinking, think, mm. make it happen, make things happen. And so it means just make yes. it happen. Yes. So I just went, do it, I went to the studio and then I said, okay, uh, I have this song in my head. And then the guy, he, he, he put the beat and then I said, Go, 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 send this when he, yeah, go, 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 you just make it happen. So that's how the song came about. Don't be afraid. What's that song about? Is it a song to yourself, to your kids? It's a song that I will, I will probably say, if you are my friend, I will mm. say, I want to tell you. Mm. Tell you me. Have I'm, 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 I'm listening. You can sing to me if you want. It says, you have everything you need. It's all in mm. you. Mm. Don't be afraid. Okay. You know, it says, don't listen to... I, I, I prefer you sang it to me as opposed to <laughs> speak it. Okay, let me start it properly. It okay. says, you have everything you need. It's in you. Don't you worry what people say. Trust yourself and go forward. This is your life. Oh, my friend. Don't be afraid. Ning hasa be here. Go with the power. I love it. I love the music more than anything. It's very nice. I produced the album, by the way. Jeez. Yeah. Are you an easy person to work with when you're producing? Um, <laughs> I don't think I'm an easy person to work with, Jay, yeah. when we are working with like music, because I love what I do. Sure. And um, 
So people can say a lot of things. Brenda is at Reza, she says, put down her phones, mm. do this. I'm I'm very disciplined. So I I I I, I You hold everyone to that standard. Yes. As like, you should. Yeah. I say we are working, let's work and mm. then when we are not working, let's have fun. But I'm very like disciplined person. So if I say ten o'clock, I came here on time. I I'm just a person like mm. if, if I say ten o'clock, let's do this. We're gonna do it. Sure. But if if I can't, I'm gonna say beforehand that you know what I'm unable to do A B C. Yes. And I expect the same from everyone mm. else. Yeah. Maybe yeah, that's how they can describe it and say I'm difficult because of that. Wow, what a week we are hanging out with Brenda Dumbo. Okay, Brenda, we're going to play the WoW game. WoW game. Uh, yes, the WoW, wow. game. Uh, uh, in fact, it's very simple. You'll play along very, very, very easily. WoW, what a stage. Which stage always leaves you saying WoW? Okay. Or, or venue. Okay. Yes. I think I'll have to say the Joe Jazz stage l- last year. Okay. Yeah. That was amazing. Um, which stage were you on uh, last year? Mira. Okay. I was at Mira. Who, I had a- who was with you on that stage? It was myself, Tandy, Swam. Jeez. Was I. Um, who else? It was an A team. <laughs> it was really a tight stage. It was so beautiful. Do you have big match temperament? Like the bigger the stage, the bigger the pressure, the more I give. No, it doesn't matter really. Like I, I can have ten people, I'll give the same, if not if not more. That is dope. Yeah. So I you, give. so you show up all the time. I show up all the time. Yeah. Wow, what a pivotal moment. You know, a, a, a moment where you knew your life was changing forever now. Yeah. What was that moment? The moment when I sang at Mamoni's funeral. I you, sang you killed it. The Mshabawet um, Yes. And the, I, the, the atmosphere, just seeing everyone. At, for that moment, that three minutes or four minutes that I was on stage, mm. I saw everyone being united. It was not about the party or anything. Everybody was singing along to the song. It was about and Mamwi, oh, near about yes. the nation and the loss. Uh, that was that was the moment. Wow, what a voice. Whose voice are you crushing on? Oh my god. <laughs> Whose voice? Let me think. I need to I need to think about this like carefully. Uh, I'll tell you now. Let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. Is this you uh, playing um what is it called? Uh, the, dip- the diplomatic games. Like, who do I not want to offend right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Honestly, I love Zoe's voice. Yes. Zoe Mudifa. Zoe Mudifa is, Zoe Mudifa is, is incredible. I love Zoe's voice. But all of you, though, within that generation, yeah. kick butts, though. Yeah. Like, all of you. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, it's very musical. We like do, we do, sing. Do you guys feel competitive against one another? No, I, I, let me speak for myself. Yes. I never feel like any competition with anyone. I'll tell you why. I, always, yes. I, and t- I don't want to sound arrogant or anything. Mm. But I feel like I'm all, all unique. I, 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 I like o- think that I'm very unique. I can sing in before or after. That's why I don't fight those things. Who sings after me or before me doesn't matter to me. Yes. When I'm there, I'm going to do my thing, my sure. own way, the way that I do it. And this has, I'm really trying to be like, not sound arrogant, but I'm not competing with anyone you're competing with your previous uh, performance exactly <laughs> exactly i like that wow what a man what was it about happy that said yes i want to marry you why are you referring where 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 do you think i'm gonna say where well, ready? <laughs> <laughs> it's a <laughs> trick <laughs> no wow what a man you, let, you, let you know what you guys have a past that was beautiful very beautiful yeah, absolutely oh my god a bu- very beautiful I love that man, and I still actually do love him. Yeah, you know he's a he's a he's a lovely father. But I'm not gonna say wow what I mean to him. Can I say someone else? Uh, yes. Wow what I mean, my father. Okay. My father. Let me tell a brief story about this man. This mm. man, his name is um, Tizozo. Sure. He's my principal from high school. Yes. He took me in, and like literally just took me as his child. Oh wow. I grew up under his leadership. He raised me. Mm. He he showed me a different side of life. Mm. Today is his birthday, actually. But that man changed my life, how I saw life, how I saw myself. Mm. You know, he would call me even here in Johannesburg and tell me, you are not operating in a full potential that I know you to be. Mm. I know that you are a strong, powerful woman. You can, Brenda, you can stand on your own and do your own thing. I want to see you doing your own thing. I'm not satisfied by you being a baking singer for all these people. Mm. Like, that man changed my life. So... 
honestly, wow, what a man. Had you not encountered uh, Babam Tizozo, where do you think your life would be right now? It's crazy. I don't know. And I don't, I don't, I, do you ever I, think about it? I do. Yeah. I do. I remember when I was looking for my uh, biological father. Yes. I thought about that. Like when I was crying over my, my, my father, I, I, I thought maybe I was being saved from something. Mm. You know, maybe I didn't have to meet my father. You know, I, this father was the one that I deserved. And yes. I got him and my life changed. In, you know, my how I think. It wasn't a coincidence. It wasn't. Mm. So I, I, I've never thought how I, uh, my life would, would be, but I'm sure. glad it's where it is. Okay. Yeah. It's not a trick question, I, I, I promise. <laughs> wow. Why didn't you all tell me this about marriage? Wow, why did you guys not tell us that gang you were a part of? You guys walked as if we were in Hamish. It's manna from heaven. So why, did you, why didn't you guys tell us? Uh, sometimes you must let the child, you know, touch the stove. I ain't. Gang you were a part of. Gang you were Wow, what a joyous moment. What's the one thing you miss about your celebration? I miss the, um, the traveling, you know, and being amongst people and just the joy of the jokes. I miss, yes. you know, being with a big en ensemble where, you know how it is, man. You know, it's always joyful, beautiful moments. I miss seeing a million of people singing and praising God. And I just miss that whole environment sometimes of prayer mm. because we'll pray. Mm. It's just so beautiful. In, 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 in fact, um, your rendition of uh, Tina Sizwe mm. often reduces many to tears. Yeah. What song has you ugly crying? Has me? Yeah. Um, Being sung by someone else, not you singing it. There's a, a, a song sung by, um, I forgot this lady, you know, but it says you. Oh, nice, sweet, tired and lonely and now I can't believe I'm still waiting around. I don't want to cry, but you know me so well. I love the song. It's, I forgot his name. It, 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 it's medicine. I forgot to say him. Could listen to you sing the whole day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love the song. It makes me cry, so I don't play it often. Do you ever blow yourself away with your own? gift how like you listen back and you're like oh geez is this me no i'm very critical of fresh like i criticize myself a lot i'm very critical like of myself yes. obviously like i want to do like my best all the time so i always try to are you fairly critical of yourself or are you often unkind to yourself i think i'm it's more of being unkind to myself mm. yeah i just want to be my best all the time and sure. that is some something that does not exist mm. perfection so it doesn't exist so i try to not be that person and to say oh it's good but I, you know it, it, it could have been better yeah at, you know at best it sharpens your talent further yeah it does before we let you go the life and times of brenda Dumbo, the musical mm. what non brenda song would be sung at which milestone in your life in this musical? Okay. So, for instance, your childhood. My childhood. So which song? Which song punctuated your childhood? <laughs> yes, that way. How did you feel sharing a name with her? I I don't even share a name. Let me tell you a story. Yes. I'm not Brenda from birth. I was not named Brenda at home. Yes. I became Brenda because. Brenda, I love Brenda Francis so oh, much. It was that bad. And then at school, um, I was like, I was like, I was like, then I became Brenda. But in my birth, birth uh, certificate, I'm not Brenda. Tell us more. No, I'm not Brenda. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tell you who I am. But <laughs> 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 no, I'm Brenda. But I'm just telling you that, that how much um, Brenda had an impact in my, in my life. Is yeah. that deep? Yeah. Which song would you say takes you back to family life? Family life. Um, uh, let me think. Let me think. There's a... It's a Shemba song. Mm. 
I can sing this the whole day because we well, could listen the whole day, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, I am from Shembe sure. background, yes. so at home, like th- those are the sound that we're playing all the time. Mm. Yeah. Your first love, or your first crush, or your first kiss in this musical about your life, what song would be sung? And did he? I love you. When your career started being a career, what song would you say would take you back there? Let me think, let me think, let me think with me. Um, I'll tell you now. Mm. Um, it's Simpue Dana's album. I remember Zanti Sile. Yes. No, don't, that, not, not Nile. Quite Yes. I was staying in, in Newville. Mm-hmm. We had one mattress and an empty room. Yes. We were staying there. But we were listening. How, how, how old are you? How old are you? How old are you? This was 2005, 6 ish. Yeah, I was still young. For 6, 7, yeah. I was still very young. Yes. And I, I heard this woman sing, And we played that song. It became like my soundtrack. Did you guys toss a coin for who gets the mattress on which nights? No, we had a. Listen, my heart, Lone. But my heart was so going up and up because I'm going to be like, 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 <laughs> what meal takes you back to that period in your life? Bread and um, squash, yeah, squash mm. juice. Oh, yes, like yeah. oros. Yeah, in danger. Yes. But brown bread mm. and squash. Where were you getting money from at that time? And how bad was it? It was bad. It was bad. When, yeah. Oh, my God. We were staying in this garage, yeah. a back room, mm. you know? Um, my friend was uh, doing some other work, mm. and then I remember she left me in the mm. garage, mm. and I was staying there. I had bread and it, it, it squash. Oh, wow. So I was eating that <laughs> for like a week or two, mm. and then I was left with nothing. I didn't have anything. Jeez. At this time, I was still, uh, been singing a celebration. Mm. I didn't have anything oh, wow. at the time. And um, I remember I. What gave you hope? Hope. In that period. And what song gave you hope in that period? That's where I... Don't forget, it. we're still in your musical here. I know. Okay, let me think so of this is of the scene now. now. You're in the garage. Now you're alone in the matras. Mm-hmm. So now it's not balanced because there's no one on the other side. Yeah. You've just had your squash. Yeah. You've just had your, your bread. Mm-hmm. And the food is finished now. Yeah. What song takes you back there? Let me think. She kept on trusting God that he... He will see her through. She kept on praying and never let go. When you left that garage, where did you go to? I didn't stay with friends. Yes. And what was the first meal you had that wasn't orange juice and I had a bread. proper meal like yeah. rice curry all colors and stuff I had every, like I had a proper proper meal oh wow how did that feel it felt good yeah. like I, I I remember I called I called my friend and I said please come help me and then they came and saw the plate that I was staying in they're like why are you living were you staying here for all this time yeah, yeah. Mm. they're like we are living oh wow so they, I took my stuff and then we left mm. what kept you away from getting caught up in Josie because unfortunately for a lot of people Josie means things are so bad now I might just allow myself to be taken advantage of by a man that can afford to help me live better for instance yeah what kept you away from going that direction my grandmother mm. my grandmother is is still alive today yeah my grandmother gave me like hope mm. you know mm. um, and just how she raised me sure with respect, respecting mm. people mm. and respecting myself. First, respecting yourself. Myself. Yes. More importantly. Mm. Like, the reason why I don't do a lot of things is because I respect myself, mm. you know? Mm. And, yeah, and I feel, I, I believe that I, I have a strong will. Sure. Naturally, yeah. Mm. I'm a very strong person. 
Uh, maybe the time single. <laughs> <laughs> the Life and Times of Brenda Mtambo, the musical, songs uh, that would punctuate uh, Brenda's musical. Mm-hmm. There are non-Brenda songs. Yes. The day you said, yes, I'll marry you. The song, when the song then? Yes. Oh, there's a song that... I too there's a song, we all have songs. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. Yes. There's a song by Mojin Gobo that uh, was our thing. Mm-hmm. What is the song? So that was like our jam. That's yeah. our jam. I, I'm forgetting. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the song. But did it leave with them? <laughs> Probably. I'm forgetting the song. It's, 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 I think it's a, it's a good thing that I'm mm-hmm. forgetting the song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've now decided that this marriage is not working. Yeah. And we have kids to raise and we will be functional mm-hmm. uh, because we have to be adult about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a song around there? I break my heart, say you love me again. I need a Christ of man and I I'll break my heart You're gonna make me cry, stop now. <laughs> <laughs> How often do people tell you about your voice and Tony Braxton's voices having a Some cousin from back opposite? Vibe? A lot, you know, yeah. all the time, like they tell me that, oh my God, your voice is like, you know, and then yeah. I don't hear it. Yeah. But I think because we both have deep voices, yeah, exactly. I have a deep voice. Like, yes. don't be fooled by this hee hee that I'm doing. Yes. It's not my voice. Yes. My voice is naturally a very low voice. Mm. Yeah. So I get that all more of the time. You're working on a show uh, next week. We can see you on stage next week. Yes. What's the song that is leading you towards next week's show, given that your anxiety has been back this week? <sighs> Thank God. Okay, I have this song. I need to think about it now. It says, All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made Oh, I will scream. Of the goodness of God. Yo. That is a song that I've never been playing. Why is the, guys, who's spraying <laughs> onion juice in my face? What's going on? <laughs> that is the song that I've been playing. Why are you making me cry on my show? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Where do we get tickets to come and watch you next week? Where do we see you next week? Next week, I'm going to be on the 24th. I'm going to be uh, in Bramfontein yeah. uh, at the un- uh, Untitled Basement. Mm-hmm. The tickets are available at Quick Hit Ticket. Okay. And on Sunday, the 26th, I'm going to be um, at, at the game in Senton. Okay. The tickets are also available. How, how much are tickets? 250. 250 tickets. Yes. Uh, 250. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you go to the comments on our um, um, on YouTube, um, I'm going to buy 10 tickets. Uh, how much space is there, though? Because we're going to buy 10 tickets and then there's no space. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna buy five doubles. Thanks. So you. please just comment there and say um, I wanna watch Brendan Dumbo sing uh, next uh, week, and we'll select you. five of you to win a double ticket. We're paying because you're trying to make money here. Okay. It's a business. It's a business. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Actually, no, this should be free. You made me cry. I'm actually mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Where do we find your social media? I am Brendan Dumbo everywhere. Yes. Um. Instagram, Brendam Dambo, MTA, Dambo is M T A M B O. Yes. Uh, Brendam Dambo on Twitter, Brendam Dambo on, where am I? On Facebook mm. and TikTok. And we can pre order your album from the 24th of yes. March. Yes, on Friday, 24th, you can pre order my album. It's called Sane. Ladies and gentlemen, she said it herself. She is Brenda 
Dunball. Thank you for tuning in. As always, we appreciate all of your feedback. Uh, you can find us on uh, social media at wow, W-A-W, what a week. Uh, shout out to uh, the cast and the crew at Amped Studio. Shout out Africa Podcast Network, Pezulu Works for all the cinematography, our audio engineer, creative artist, The Flow Fraser, and uh, creative director, Kuvesh Mohan, and show producer, Kelezo Mudisa King. You can email us at w-a-w at africapodcastnetwork.com This is Wow! What a week. <laughs>